So when I ask you this morning, there may be those who do not know Him. I say to you, are you saved? And if you say, I think I am, I might be, I hope I am, friend, you ought to come this morning as I feel the Holy Ghost as I say this. And you ought to come and give your heart to Jesus because when you are saved, you don't say, I think I am, I might be, or I hope I am. When you're saved, you know you're saved. And you say, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. There's no doubt. There's no question. You know that you are. You know that you've been touched. You know that the mighty finger of God has get down into your heart and touched you. And from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you're a brand new creation. You may not be perfect. You may not have it all lined up. But God's got you set in the direction. And your heart is set on the things of God. And you say to yourself, I no longer want to be the old. But I won't be the new. I'm fixing to run in this office. Somebody are playing with God. But it's time to turn around. Maybe you're here. And you know your relationship is not where it needs to be. Friend, can I say something to you? I said it last Sunday and I'm going to say it again. There are some that are allowing outside things to take the place of spiritual things. The parents don't be mad at me. I'm not telling you you ought to remove your children from every activity that they do. But I want you to understand that they ought to be as good a Christian as they are a ball player. Somebody ought to say amen to that. This nation's children are going to hell in a handbasket. And we're sitting and watching them do it. And when they get 16 and 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 and they don't want to go to church anymore and they're doing things that we know we didn't teach them and they're looking you square in the eye and say, I don't care what you think I'm going to do in any way. We know we have a problem. And it doesn't start when they get old. It's, it's like the black comedian said, if we don't start in the play pen, they're going to end up in the state pen and then it's going to be too late. God help us that our relationship be where it needs to be. Our eyes fixed upon Jesus. Our hearts fixed upon who He is. Maybe you're here and you just know you're not where you need to be. Maybe you're here and you just need answers. Maybe you're here and there's things going on in your life and you say, I just need an answer to this. I need an answer to that. I need to know about this. I need to know about that. There's questions in my life. There's questions in my situation. And I just need God to touch me. Maybe you're here. And you just want your life to be closer to Him than it ever has been before. How many of you remember several weeks ago when I'm fixing the gloves? How many of you remember several weeks ago when I preached the sermon that if you're cold and you're undone or your life is not what you think it ought to be and at one time you were closer to God than you can ever remember or think, go back to that point where it was the hottest point. Go back to that point when you know, remember when Jacob went back to Bethel. He returned to his first love. He returned to where he had first found God. Where he had first built that altar. He returned back. And some of you need to return back to that first place when you were at your hottest. When you were at the best place of your life and God seemed in everything that you do to be at the center of all you were and you felt at peace in your heart and your mind and it didn't matter what kind of struggle came your way. You knew that God Almighty was in charge. Hey, this isn't in my notes, people. I want you to know that. You knew that God was in charge. And you didn't question where you were. Because the Holy Ghost of Heaven would come and comfort you and say no matter the storm and no matter the trial, no matter the hurt that you feel, I'm 
ear and I'm the peace speaker. I'm him who can comfort you. I'm him who can lift you up. I'm him who walks with you in the light. I'm him who steps on the clouds when you're on the mountaintop. I'm him. I'm him. And his name is Jesus. See, I say to you that Proverbs 14, 34 says this. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. And it's time for us to stand up and do what is right no matter what the cost. Amen. Won't you come to Jesus today? I don't want you to do it because Mama wants you to do it. It's nice. It's good to all. I don't want you to do it because Daddy wants you to do it. That's sweet. Awfully good of you. But I want you to do it because you want Him to have complete control of your heart and your life. Hallelujah. My grandmother used to sing a song. I can remember a little white church out in the country. A little, little town in South Carolina. Many times my grandfather would go to pastor that church, preach for them when they didn't have a pastor. And I can see my daddy Stancil with her hair about this high. <coughs> There wouldn't be a soloist that morning. Nanny would have to sing. My papa was a stickler and he believed that you had to have certain things in service and a solo was one of them. So he would say, Ruby, get something ready. And there were many times that Nanny would get nervous and she couldn't remember the words to songs. And I know that we went several times that she would sing the same song over and over. But it never seemed to get really old. It never seemed to bother anybody. And it was a simple song. It wasn't a hard song. It wasn't a Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir song. It wasn't even one that the Gaithers sing today. Maybe not. I don't know. But I found its words last night and I want you to listen to it. I want you to imagine your nanny or your mama or godly saint or whoever standing up. No piano. No frills. No whistles. No bells. But just a soft, sweet voice that began to sing Have thine affections nailed to the cross. Is thy heart right with God? Dost thou count all things for Jesus, the loss? Is thy heart right with God? Hast thou dominion or self or, or sin? Is thy heart right with God? Over all evil without, within, is thy heart right with God? Is there no more condemnation for sin? Is thy heart right with God? Does Jesus rule the temple within? Is the heart right with God? Are all thy powers under Jesus' control? Is the heart right with God? Does He each moment abide in your soul? Is the heart right with God? And then she'd say the chorus, Is the heart right with God? Is the heart right with with God, washed in the crimson blood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lonely, is the heart.